there are a few things I want to cover in this video. The first one being I'm going to be gone uh, on Friday and through the weekend. And so I will not be doing a live stream. Typically, I do an end of trade week. It's the last hour of the trade week, basically, uh, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Fridays. And that's my time. That's Central Standard Time. Uh, but I will not be here. And so that's not going to happen, uh, at least not for me. Maybe Seth and Chad share don't get together and do something uh, sort of to, to keep it going. But, uh, but I'll be back the following week since I'll be gone on weekend. And, and that's kind of why I wanted to do a little bit – not a long video, but a lengthier video. I was also, I had some issues when I was trying to upload earlier. And so I'm just going to try and condense a couple things into this video. First of all, let's, let's get into this. Uh, if you haven't looked at it, this is available on the Neo website. Whoops. I just did the wrong thing. <laughs> Naturally, uh, as I do, if I'm involved, there's an excellent chance something could go wrong. Let's try this again. That's better. <laughs> uh, what I was trying to pull up was the unaudited second quarter 2022 financial results. Now you can go to neo.com and pull these up for yourselves. But I wanted to share with you one thing I was really happy about. And I think it's an incredibly underrecognized but tremendous sign and signal for what we're seeing. But we're, we're not really, it's not like, being made into a big deal, which is why I want to highlight it. If you scroll down, or if we go down here to the part where it reads cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash and short-term investment, the amount that Neo had as of June 30th, 2022 is $8.1 billion. And that's US dollars. Now, the reason this is frankly, it blows me away, is if you stop a step back and consider all of the expansion NEO has going on with the battery swap plant in Hungary, for one thing, with the added R&D that's going on, with the NEO autonomous drive that's going to be coming out, with the solid state hybrid battery, which, by the way, we did get sort of bad news, I guess, on that. That's been delayed. Um, but that's, that's sort of uh, what you get sometimes when you've got a lot of partners that you're working with. And that's one of the advantages of NEO with this rather lean model that they operate with from a business standpoint. And so you kind of have to just factor that in, I think. Um, but the flip side is obviously that NEO is able to do this incredible expansion. NEO Park will be coming online. And obviously it is not draining NEO because NEO has had billions and billions of dollars on the balance sheet for over a year now. And that is incredibly positive because regardless of where the stock price is and regardless of how much shorts might want to pressure the company and push it towards, you know, their idea, I think in some, uh, in some cases is that they can push a company into bankruptcy. And I think we saw that a couple of years ago when they really thought they had a chance to bankrupt Neil. But what happened is they got caught and they got caught because all of these fails to deliver these fake shares that they'd created out of thin air. And yeah, I'm going there a little bit speculating on this, um, but they got caught. And if you look at the fails to deliver for Neil during that time frame, you will see the absolute crazy number and, and how for a period of time that went on. And you'll also see that the stock price went from $2 and change up to $54. And then it came back down a little bit and then it went back up into the 60s. And then it has since come back down and we've since seen some shorting pressure. But I didn't wanna talk all about that in this video. I just mentioned it because it is relevant for the stock price. But even if those shorts, let's say, have this crazy idea that NEO is going to go bankrupt, well, maybe they're not paying attention to these billions and billions of dollars that NEO has maintained on their balance sheet while they are slowly edging closer to profitability. And the biggest single indicator uh, in my mind is going to be for when NEO positions and then becomes profitable is going to be the vehicle sales and the margins correspondingly. Basically, the vehicle sales need to get to a certain point. And once they get there, that's going to take NEO to profitability. 
the better the margins are, the more quickly they'll get to profitability and also the more profitable they will be once they get there. And then, you know, it's just kind of going from there at that point. Um, a lot of the short pressure will probably alleviate by that time and knock on wood. I, I hope so. I think so. Uh, but again, let's let's come back and, and remember Neo sent three ships of ET7s over to Europe. And yet they're still sitting with all this money on their balance sheet. William Lee has come over to the U.S. He has been talking about doing a U.S. entry for years, but he wants to make sure they're positioned. I think there's more to it than that also. I think he wants to make sure that they release the right product for the American market. And what I mean is if they are going to lead with, let's say, the ET7 or the ET5, or perhaps even a different model or sub brand, you know, I'm not sure what all they're thinking, but I do believe it makes a lot of sense for them to make a good decision, make sure they bring a model that they're going to actually like, like crush it. Like there's no question uh, that they know they will literally sell a crap load of them. And, and so I think that's a big part of their decision and also part of why they haven't made an announcement that they want to make sure they do it the right way. Also, it doesn't make sense for them, frankly, to try to expand further than Europe when we still haven't seen them able to get through the bottleneck supply chain issues, things like that. We don't even know what shutdowns are going to look like. And for an update on that, let me throw this out there. Chengdu, my buddy Nick, and follow him on Twitter if you haven't uh, to see what's going on because he gives updates on this. He had talked about when Chengdu was shut down. Uh, if you see those articles floating around, the ones where they talk about 64 million in China shut, you know, locked down and all this sort of thing. Well, Chengdu is a, a city with over 20 million people right there. So that's at least a third of the number roughly right there. Uh, but if you want to kind of get updates on that, Nick is someone I follow on Twitter. And, and so it, it's just it's great to have context over there and, and to be able to track a little bit more real time and also get better data than maybe the news narratives that we sometimes get from media companies and, and folks with social media platforms who maybe don't know what's going on or who maybe have an agenda or are just looking at profit off of clickbait and fear mongering, that sort of thing. Again, I am off topic. So the topic, so let me come back. You know, the, the point being this money, all, all this access cash reserves that, the company is in a really good spot. Uh, and, and so they're still not to that hyper growth point yet. We're waiting on some of that. But I think that's actually factoring in to the U.S. and why they haven't made an announcement. I also don't think they're going to make an announcement before at the earliest this Neo Day, which would be December or January. But it's also going to be, you know, let's face it, if, if Neo, let's say by the end of the year, is doing... 20,000 deliveries uh, monthly and or or versus if they're doing 30,000 vehicle deliveries monthly, I think that could be something that would also play into decision making for when an announcement and when expansion into the U.S. would probably uh, uh, be more realistic or make sense for them to address. Um, this is just how I see it. And I'm a simple guy. I'm a logical, common sense kind of guy. I'm not this industry trained uh, professional and, and I don't try to uh, pretend like I am. In fact, I think it's it's personally, I prefer that I'm not, um, but I'm, I'm glad. And this is the, the other thing that I really wanted to mention and then ask for, for questions or feedback on this because I'm really glad uh, Tomas it was one of the comments in my last video. And, and it was regarding, I just did a four minute quick hitter on uh, the, potential for 68,000 uh, deliveries in the fourth quarter it, because it was brought up, it was caught. Uh, William Lee was talking about it kind of passively mentioned and suggested that might be possible without saying that number. Analysts picked up on it. We're asking them questions. So I highlighted that because that's a very exciting thing and something I'll be looking forward to. I don't know if we'll see it yet. I hope so in the fourth quarter, but regardless, um, Tomas had, had commented and, and basically asked if um, I would do or could do some sort of fundamental analysis on Neo. And I don't know if he was talking specifically with the earnings uh, or ongoing, but I will say I prefer to not do things the way that analysts do them. I prefer to not even look at things 
from the lens or the view. And this is how contrarian I am. I just prefer to not look at things the same way that folks who are industry trained choose to look at them. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is for one, it's not the best use of my time because even if I spend the time and go through the coursework and, and learn how to think the way that they're taught and told to think, I'm still only learning to be told how to think and how to look at things. And, and that just grates on me personally. I, I just don't agree with that ideology of, oh, I have to have someone else tell me how to do my own thinking. But to that point, the other benefit that we have, and this is the other reason I don't really worry about getting into and looking at things from that lens is there are a lot of folks who have been industry trained and I have found and located some very high level people in that regard. And it's much more valuable and a much better use of my time to reference access and pay attention to what they're saying and thinking with regard to that, if that makes sense. So that's one of the reasons or actually a couple of reasons that I don't and have not tried to go that route, that direction of, of talking about things from a highly technical, um, you know, at, at that level. And, and even, and I asked, and you know, my response, and I don't think he's responded to me, but, but I kind of asked him like, you know, any suggestions, any clarity. So this is what I want to do. Open this up and say, what is something, what are things that you would like for me to talk about, focus in on, hone in on it. There are still plenty of things that I haven't gotten to that I have intended to get to. But that's actually one of the reasons that I kind of just stayed with Neo as sort of the crux of my channel. The, the main focal point was I knew they had so much more going on than I would be able to cover. And so that's part of why I picked them. I also knew there would be plenty of time to get into things and to study and learn and just kind of share some of those things as I see them, as I, um, again, I'm a common sense, simple kind of guy, but I also don't want to come across or pretend like I'm something I'm not. And I don't want to be an industry trained professional. I actually think that they consistently miss early on with companies like Neo because they're industry trained, because they were told to think and, and look at things a certain way. And so they don't know what to do with the company that is so far outside of the box, so unconventional, so new and innovative and disruptive. And that is sort of, for me, that's the, the definition. That's the idea is I want to be seeing things and, and recognizing things that maybe they're not quite seeing or getting yet. That means I have to wait. That also means what we've seen could come into play, like a lot of stock price volatility, a lot of beat down and, and different things happening. But again, there are plenty of things that I'm still studying, like, well, what makes those things happen? And that's what led me to, for example, the fails to deliver and figuring out about how shorting sometimes is done. And, and here's the simplest way to kind of break that down. None of us probably who are watching this, or, or I, I certainly don't, actually hold any physical stock certificates for any of the shares of any company that I am invested in. And so the idea is, well, if none of us have those, well, who is there to make sure that fake shares or hypothecated or rehypothecated shares aren't being created in part by entities or investors, larger investors who want to push down price action, control, manipulate price action including this use of what are sort of referenced as naked uh, shares or naked synthetic shares. And so I think it's a really fascinating thing. The AMC movement has, and, and seeing that and, and passively being a part of it, but really watching that and studying that uh, has really opened my eyes and been really helpful, beneficial for me from that lens and, and to see uh, things like, okay, when there's, you know, certain pressure and there are certain news narratives put out, uh, and, and when there's certain, you know, negative pressure in conjunction with those into a specific, a particular stock or a set of stocks, you know, in, in the case of the Chinese stocks, a lot of the Chinese based stocks, we've seen a whole lot of negative news narratives. Um, does that mean that every single company is bad or dishonest or won't ever make money? I mean, no, of course not. But because you take as part of your risk, all of that sort of into consideration, into account, 
you just don't know uh, when or for how long that can go on. And so, look, I went off on a little bit of a tangent, but I, I guess to bring it back full circle, I'm choosing, I'm selectively opting to not do things the way that a lot of folks conventionally do them. Uh, and that's not to say that I can't still address some things, go into some things, talk about some things. But the other thing is, frankly, when I think of companies, it's, it's really simple. I have two categories for companies that are listed in the stock market. You got the ones that are profitable and the ones that are not yet profitable. The ones that are not yet profitable, what's the value play of investing in them? Generally, I'm thinking in terms of it's going to be a growth stock. It's going to be maybe a heavily shorted stock. Maybe it's a shorter term and it's it's a it's a trade play opportunity, something that where there are indicators that you can align with major indices or something that is is really obvious and simple. Again, I'm a simple guy. I like, you know, trying to apply logic and common sense. Uh, and I and I think that I believe in to my very limited experience uh, in life and investing less emotion and more common sense uh, has generally done well for me. Um, but you also have to factor in, let's say, for example, NEO, growth stock, not yet profitable. Okay, what's the time frame? Because if it's susceptible to short-term you know, price volatility and negative uh, news narratives and possibly even illegal naked shorting going on, then at what point does that change? When does that go away? And is there a time frame that I can sort of align that with as far as my investment goals are. For NEO, ironically, I have kind of factored those in even before I knew about or, or had much understanding about a lot of these things. So doing the longer term view, and for me, it was sort of like, all right, short term, I'm thinking at least 2025, holding until then, maybe longer. Uh, but let's see where everything is because I knew there needed to be time for the company to develop to see whatever was going on in the world and the markets. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, things have been very negative with the markets and the world and the negative news narrative and all the things that have happened to help push the price uh, to the downside for Neo really hasn't changed anything for me other than for me to say, OK, maybe it ends up being a longer than a 2025 on the short term hold. Maybe it's 2027. The only question I really have to ask myself is, am I OK with that? And I am. I'm fine with that. So again, because 2025 was the short term for me, I don't mind waiting until 2030 if that's how long it takes. Uh, but again, each investor has to do what works for them. For me, it's a really simple approach like that. And the other nice thing, if we're talking specifically about profitability, if Neo becomes profitable in 2024, let's say that's the year they become profitable, then that gives me some time. That gives Neo some time to establish itself as more of a value play and less of a growth play. Although, as we've seen in a company like Tesla, where it took a long time to get to that point of profitability, but then it is, has since proven that it has the potential, even as a sort of value or profitable play, to also be a growth play. And so that's where I think we'll see not a similar move, not a similar stock price necessarily. That is not why I'm in Neo. I don't want it or need it to follow Tesla and go to $5,000 or whatever. Um, but conceptually from the standpoint of it is a company that when it matures, it could still have a huge, like really big upside and a, maybe even a hyper growth cycle ahead, which would mean it still factors into the growth stock scenario, but also is profitable at that point, which again, is kind of, for me, it's simple. The way I look at things is you either got your profitable or, or your prof companies that aren't profitable versus your companies that are profitable. And so the profitable ones are sort of like the value companies. And so they're the ones that I look at with a little different view versus the ones that are not yet profitable. Um, and some of my concepts probably could apply and be you know, explained in conjunction with sort of the industry professional uh, and, and their training and their thinking. Uh, but I just, I don't see the point in trying to look at the ratios that are done as industry standards when there is no further breakdown of 
bear market versus bull market, weak market versus strong market, um, seasonal uh, aspects are not taken into account in conjunction with all of those. And frankly, a company that's not yet profitable versus a company that is profitable is just going to look completely different. And so not having the specificity and the details, like once you really get into it, I think you have to take it further than what a lot of folks take it. And that's a very time consuming and difficult thing to do. And again, from the standpoint of the industry professional, how the heck are they supposed to know what to do with something they've never seen before? How do you place value on battery as a service, the subscription that Neo has created where they have partners and they don't even show the revenue necessarily on the balance sheet so we can break it down from Neo? And, and how about all the other interests and investments that they have that we don't necessarily even have access to, to review in that way? Um, they really only show you know two forms of income. One is very general. And the other is basically from the sale of the vehicles. So that's what we have to go off of in three years, in five years, that even the way they break things down may look completely different. And it may be a lot easier to, to get into those things, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to try to evaluate them before the company's really even fully established or mature or profitable in my mind. So just a little bit of, uh, <laughs> it's, what, 21 minutes in the video uh, into the the craziness. And I like to call it the common sense mind that is mine. Uh, but I wanted to offer because I, I think it's a valid, good question. And, and I want to know from the viewers if there are things that you want me to cover specifically, if there are things that <clears throat> you really like that I do that you really don't like that I do. Uh, you know, this is a great time. I really appreciate the dialogue. I try to take the time and get to the comments. I don't know how quickly I'll get to them all this weekend uh, because I don't even know, you know, what kind of access I'll have to the internet. So I don't want to count on that. But I did want to make a point of doing this video, setting it up, sharing it, uh, and, and also sort of back to the very first point that I wanted to make is all that money that Neo is sitting with on the balance sheet that they have maintained on the balance sheet for over a year. And remember, this is not yet a profitable company, but even so they're doing incredibly large scale uh, expansion and they're not spending the money. Very, very, very exciting and um, an indicator for me that this is a company that is really making a, a great use of the partnerships that it has again. The negative side of that is when you have something like the solid state battery, the hybrid battery, they have partners. It sounds like they're going to have to delay that, push that out. That's maybe a, a downer or a negative or frustrating. But at the same time, that's a part of how things are structured and how they're doing things. And when the flip side of that is you get a partnership in something like Neo Park, where Neo is going to be able to at least double their capacity, probably more than that, probably very quickly. And they've maintained billions and billions of dollars on the balance sheet as a growth company that's not yet profitable. I, I just, I'm very bullish on that. I'm very excited about that. So stock price is stock price and it's going to be volatile probably for a while. Um, but that's okay. Because again, I'm, I'm that long-term guy. Uh, I'm looking at years down the road and I'm very excited at having the opportunity to add a little bit here and there when I can at these prices. So let me wrap this thing up because I, had no idea I was going to talk this long, but if you stuck around to the end, you're an absolute rock star and I appreciate it. Uh, please let me know in the comments what, what your thoughts are. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I look forward to reviewing them. Also shout out to anyone and everyone who, when you see the, I will not do any WhatsApp, any promotion, any of that kind of stuff ever in the comments. If you see any of that stuff or anything that you know is spam or, or something that I wouldn't welcome, I do try to take the time to get rid of all that stuff when I see it. But if I'm not around and I can't sort of monitor that, uh, I would appreciate any help kind of cleaning up that trash if it if it pops up under, under uh, or in the comment section while I'm gone. So thank you all. Have a great weekend. I can't wait to come back and, and do some more content, get back on it. Maybe we'll do a live stream even early in the week. I don't know. Let's see how I feel. Uh, and let's see what's going on. Maybe there'll be some new developments and exciting news over the weekend. But regardless, thank you all. I sure appreciate your time and we'll talk to y'all again real soon.